Yo, gare na 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 me, jojo mo birondo. Yeah, yo. Yo. Yo garden na na ha me ha jujja mo be ro ho no garden na na me garden na na me ha jujja mo be ro no garden na na me jujja mo be ro no garden na na ha me ha jujja mo be ro ho no kaya man morang ay kaya man morang ay he cha gun gun ganyon go kaya man morang ay cha gun gun ganyon go kaya man morang ay he cha gun gun ganyon go garden na na me garden na na me ha jujja mo be ro no garden na na me jujja mo be ro no kapr kapr Yo, hey, welcome back, Wanya. Uh, we're here uh, not far up the road from where we were just at, uh, the Dolphin Calling Point, same uh, area, sandstone, sandstone Point. It's actually just behind the Sandstone Point Tavern is where we're situated here, overlooking Bribey Island across the passage, and behind me, uh, if you can sort of focus there, we're at the, the fish traps. The fish traps, the, uh, it's a, a special place for a lot of our families to come regularly in fishing season, usually throughout most of the season. But you know, those fish traps were set up for uh, one, you know, a style of hunting technique. A lot of people, you know, we were just at the other place, Dolphin Point, where it talks about you calling out the dolphins to help you catch the fish. Well, in this case, we're using the tides. And so we basically use the materials that is available on this landscape, which is many forms of little rocks and boulders. And we, uh, we make a rock pool in the, the low tide. And we make, uh, you know, in the shape uh, where it's sort of contouring the water. So you don't have a flat bit where the water sort of recedes out. You're going to have sort of a funnel and a bit of a point so that the water's uh, pressure is not too bad and it doesn't sort of destroy your wall that you've already created. And so yeah, there'll be a number of people involved in uh, creating the fish trap, stacking the wall, uh, building it up to a certain uh, depth. Uh, on the ends as well, they would make sure that there's uh, a place where a net could be fitted. So uh, uh, when the, it's time to catch the fish, some of the fish uh, overflow out uh, in the corners and so nets can be sort of used. So uh, basically what we're doing is we're using the tide. So we've made our fish trap now and the low tide out of all the rocks and materials on this landscape. And then basically we wait for the tides and then the tides come in and cover over the top of the fish trap. And when that water comes in, it also brings in a whole heap of fish. And so those fish are sort of swimming uh, over the top of this fish trap. Little do they know it is an actual trap. And then as they're swimming around feeding off the rocks and oysters and shellfish, the water starts to recede and it goes back out. Well, the fish trap actually traps the water which in turn traps the fish that are in that water and, and it will slowly sort of leak out through the, uh, the gaps in the rock wall. But it does contain it for a certain time, which gives us enough time to get there on that low tide, to see what is in that fish trap, to use our spears, use our hands, use our nets to extract whatever we want out of that fish trap to attract the fish into the fish trap. You know, a lot of people saying, how do they get in there? How do the, the fish get into that sort of area? And how do, you, how do you get a lot of fish in there to, to trap them? Well, we would use burley, you know, where you would crush up uh, shellfish, crush shellfish up and then throw it in the water, which uh, is giving a bit of food and a bit of scent in the water, which is attracting the fish towards your fish trap. And so, you know, that would be regularly uh, done on all parts of it. And there'd be a whole heap of bait in the water, basically to attract it to the fish into that particular fish trap. And as the water recedes back out, those fish get caught in the water. We come along and spear and net it, let some of them go, you know, we might not uh, like to eat that species or that species is uh, not the one to eat at that particular season. And so we'll only pick what we need and then um, and just let the, um, the, the water do the rest. And, you know, and even if there are some fish in there that, you know, might get a little bit trapped in there and the water recedes out and they're stuck, we'll make sure that we'll get them back out under that deeper water. So uh, a very, very smart way of uh, catching your fish, 
uh, on these coastal parts into tidal. Perfect habitat here at Pummer Stone Passage. The tide comes right up, it's right up past the, and it fully covers this, fully because you can't even see it on the high tide. But now as you see, the water receding back on the low tide, you can see the fish trap appear, which you could imagine the men, the women, children uh, foraging through the fish trap and collecting uh, anything out of it that they uh, would like to eat that particular day or night. Uh, but this is universal. This fish trap is universal. There's a lot of cultures across the world. I've done a lot of research on, on fish traps. And um, yeah, you're, you're talking everywhere, England to Spain, to Indonesia, to Malaysia, uh, New Zealand, uh, you know, the Vanuatu, South Sea Islanders, Papua New Guineans, Native Americans. I mean, I mean everybody. Everybody was using this type of technique. So it's, uh, it's an ancient one and I'm just glad that what it's still intact, it's still here. And another interesting thing about this fish trap is that in the early days of settlement, Aboriginal people stopped using the fish traps. They, they were uh, taken away from their areas as we know. Some settlers that were here might have been using it, but we know from early reports that South Sea Island groups that were brought over in the blackbirding days and the slavery days with the cane cutting, and uh, a lot of those South Sea Island people were here, stuck here as, uh, you know, indentured workers to cut the cane. And when they had a look at the landscape, they saw a fish trap down here. And they thought, that, that reminds us of home. We use the same sort of technique at home. And so there was early reports by settlers that South Sea Island men and women, or oh, mainly your men, were using these fish traps to catch their fish. And the, could it still be used today? Yes, it could be. It just needs to be a little bit of uh, repairs. The walls need to be repaired. and and uh, the people sort of need to, to get involved in that to reshape it. But for as now, it's great as it is, and it's a, a cultural site, and I bring a lot of people here to come along and to talk about this. Um, the Aboriginal word for your fish trap, there wasn't really a term that was given to me when I was a young fella, but for fish, there's many terms for fish. The general word for fish is guyu. You know, they say guyu all the way up North Queensland. Jabakai fella say guyu. So I think it's one of those words that I think is used down south as well, down towards Camilleroy Guyu for fish. But then you know you have particular fish that they really like to eat, like your mullet and your tailor. Tailor, we would call it tailor. That's a traditional word for, the, for that fish. Uh, for the mullet, we say jura. Uh, for the brim, we would say bingera. And for the whiting, we would say talara. And so, you know, there's, there's many other d different types of fish, but they were the main ones that you would probably find in these types of estuaries here. But there it is, in perfect view, with the tide, perfect tide. So we, we picked at the right times to come here today to view the ancient fish traps, Sandstone Point. <laughs>